focused widely in textiles, medicine, and food, but what is the difference between it and marijuana? Here to answer that question, please welcome medical doctor and health coach Dr. Elaine Chin and naturopathic doctor Dr. I mean, my goodness, we're hearing CBD, THC, we're hearing it all the time. So it's nice for us to just sit down and get a definition of the difference between hemp and marijuana. So I'll start with you, Doc. What's the difference? What's so the definition? It is all confusing because you've got common names and then you've got scientific names. So cannabis is a scientific name okay. and marijuana and hemp is what we call common names. Okay. So I think let's just leave it at that because yeah. we're not doing biology 101 today. Okay. <laughs> and both of these plants or all of these cannabis plants produce a combination of THC or mm -hmm. CBD and they're the active ingredients that we get the stimulation or the relaxation effects. Okay, so there's a difference though between the CBD and the THC, and what would that difference be? Well, one is what we call psychoactive, which is the THC. THC? And one we would say CBD is generally the one that's not addictive and is calming, and you'd never get really high on that, you wouldn't. Okay, but you might from the THC. You, technically, you do. Let's talk about how hemp impacts our bodies, and I'm gonna throw this one to you, Elizabeth. Great, so as Elaine mentioned, both the hemp and the cannabis, the marijuana, they all contain uh, cannabinoids. So you've got your THC, and hemp it's very low, less than 0.3%, so there's none of the psychoactive effects. Mm -hmm. uh, your body also makes its own set of cannabinoids that bind to your brain and to uh, different receptors in your body. Mm -hmm. So they have the effect of regulating hormones and of maintaining overall body balance or homeostasis. Okay. So if people are concerned with things like like nausea, inflammation, mm -hmm. chronic pain, then hemp can be a really great solution that doesn't have any of the psychoactive effects. Okay, interesting. So I actually, uh, I got, you took a swab from me, mm -hmm. Dr. Chin. Cheek, just to be just a little cheek swab. Yes. Um, and, it, and it was, you know, it was very easy. In order to uh, give me an exam and to test me to see what the impact would be of CBD, right? right. CBD right. and THC? Absolutely. Okay, so we got my exam results, everybody. <laughs> and they were incredibly boring. Yes. <laughs> what did it say? And we're being truthful here. She's yeah, I've got them right here. She's boring because she's normal. Yeah. Yeah, it's like, how normal, can that be? Normal metabolizer, normal metabolizer, average, average, average. <laughs> average. This would have killed me in grade six. <laughs> average. Yes. But, for, but for these for purposes, purposes, it's actually kind of good. Because what that fundamentally means is that if I gave you a dose, regardless if it's a THC CBD combination or one or just the other for different reasons, I would give you the normal standard dose mm -hmm. and I would expect a normal metabolism rate and yeah. a normal effect rate of how you break down your THC or CBD. Okay. And then we also looked at the psychoactive or anxiety side effect risk factors for you. Yep. You don't have it. Yep. And equally important, you don't have the effects of a THC dependency risk factor. The reason why you would administer or take part in an exam like that would be in order to see how you're going to take on and metabolize right. something like CBD or THC. Right, because a lot of patients are wondering, is this right for me? So yeah. now we're going to bring science into this conversation to say, if you're not sure, let's look at your genetic predispositions. Mm -hmm. And we also in our office measure something called neurotransmitters, which are your brain chemicals, okay. which is the impact of THC and CBD. So we'll know what to give you more or less of. Okay. Do you have, is there such thing as like an average dose that you would start out with if someone had average results yeah. like this? Yeah, so most prescribing physicians will start at the lowest dose mm -hmm. and titrate you up just to be careful. Another thing worth mentioning is the, the form that you take it in. So if you're taking it sublingually under your tongue or in your mouth, yeah. you're absorbing up to 100% up to more than if you're taking it orally and you're actually ingesting or eating it. Oh. The, the potency in eating something is vastly reduced. So Very the form makes a huge difference. So what are the main benefits, do you think, Elizabeth? Like, why would people turn to a CBD or a THC or hemp product? Yeah, the main benefits are, I mean, all the cannabinoids have different profiles, and so the product that you're get, getting is dependent upon the cannabinoid and also another class of molecules called terpenes okay. upon the profile of those. But the main benefits are they're anti-inflammatory. They can help with sleep, with mood, with brain conditions. Those are the big ones, and also gut health. Nausea, um, health, you know, okay. uh, cachexia or difficulty with weight loss around cancer. Yes. There's all kinds of benefits and more are being released as the data comes out.
any warnings that people should be aware of before they decide that they want to go pursue this as a, uh, you know, as a remedy? Yeah, I would say go to a physician that prescribes cannabis rather than just go to a recreational mm. store and like wing it. Right. Mm -hmm. Make sure you're with the doctor. They know what they're doing. They've done this before. Yeah. And, and I understand a lot of people are saying, well, my family doctor is dismissing it. It's only because I think they haven't got that time yet to kind of do the research, do the information. So yeah. go to somebody that is prescribing. Anything else we should know? Give it a go if uh, traditional medical drugs aren't working for you. Okay, good. That's good information. Thank you for clarifying a lot of that for us, uh, both of you.